This is Ryan from Remote Money. I show you remote jobs and travel vlogs, and today I'm taking you to Lima and Cusco and Machu Picchu, Peru. On a budget and four days of paid time off. So I went for four nights to Peru, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm gonna do a budget breakdown of how much we spent and how to DIY your trip to Peru on your own with plenty of tips and tricks and logistics. Like this one, book your entry tickets to Machu Picchu before you book your flight. It's easier to book that way and work your way backwards, especially if you have limited paid time off. We began our journey in Punta Cana from Toronto, we're Canadian, and we flew into Lima. And it was about a four hour flight changing time zones. We had plenty of time, five days to relax at Grand Palladium, relaxed on the beach, and then we flew into Lima at night. It was about 9.30. We asked our hotel on booking.com to hire us a driver. I showed up with a sign with my name on it. The taxi drive to the hotel cost about 20 bucks and it took about 30 minutes. Oh, the right there. Yeah, so we stayed at the Wyndham on the way back to Canada because we had an early morning flight. And uh, so this is the Lot Boutique. 8.6 is the score it got on booking.com. That's how we booked. We arrived uh, almost at uh, 10 p.m. Check-in was easy. Um, there's a little courtyard there. The room was great. I love that exposed brick. The bed was very comfortable. We slept like babies. It was clean. It was comfy. $55 a night. Um, not including the airport shuttle, which was great. Uh, the breakfast was delicious. And we were able to get out of bed, eat breakfast, and then walk to Miraflores to see all the sights and sounds in the morning. So the location is perfect. The only drawback is a little bit of street noise as the cars pass by in the morning might wake you up, but uh, not a big deal. We were only in Lima for a few hours anyway because we had a flight to catch at 2 p.m. the next day in Cusco. So yeah, it was great. Perfect hotel. So as you can imagine, we were starving after getting off that flight so late. And so we made the 10 minute walk to Mercado Central in Miraflores and it was great. It has a bunch of nightclubs, if that's what you're into, and restaurants. And the food was good. And this is us having some saltado, de pollo, some Peruvian style uh, chicken. Slept well, these blackout drapes were great. A little bit of street noise, as you can see the cars there, but uh, no big deal. Breakfast. Um, they scheduled it for us, papaya juice, pineapple juice, scrambled eggs, fried eggs, toasts, butter, jam, everything. It was very filling, oatmeal as well. It was delicious. And from there, we just walked over to Mercado de Miraflores, the uh, waterfront in Miraflores with the cliff top, beautiful cliff top views of the Pacific Ocean. So just some fun facts about Peru. If you're watching this, I'm sure you know all about Machu Picchu. It's one of the seven world wonders and it was built by the Inca people. Look at that lighthouse, looks amazing. So you're seeing tennis courts, bike trails, running trails, pull-up bars, dip bars here. I'm doing some dips. I was blown away at how active this neighborhood is and I had to get some work in. If you know anything about me seeing any other of my videos, it was so much fun. And this stretch of Vera Flores, I believe, is called Park Antonio Raimondi. You can look it up on Google. It was fantastic. And here's another fun fact. Uh, Peru's population is about 34 million, which is about half of the United Kingdom. So we're heading to Park of Love or Park de la Mor, and um, that's also in Mira Flores, I believe, heading east. See the statue there, can't miss it. The crepe shop is right next to it. All right, so I did some research, y'all, just to come up with some of these fun facts for you. 
Peruvians apparently discovered potatoes, golden potatoes on the shores of Lake Titicaca towards the south that they share it with Bolivia. And they discovered that about thousands of years ago. I thought that was interesting to share with you. Because <laughs> you will eat potatoes with every single meal, okay? They serve potatoes. So if you don't like potatoes, just ask for it on the side or not at all. We're in Lima. Hey, baby girl. So Lima is actually uh, the world's second largest desert city after Cairo, Egypt. Yes, when you look at Google Maps, Google Earth, it's a desert. So Lima is the capital city of Peru, I'm sure you know, and it's the only capital city in South America that faces the, uh, a big body of water, so the sea or the ocean. So still dropping some knowledge on you guys, Peru was once called a black city as 40% of its population was made up of African slaves during the Spanish rule. Here we are taking the staircase. This is amazing, the staircase to the beach, from the cliff to the beach. And again, I'm getting some work done. I'm gonna take my shirt off. I'm so warm. Telling you to get fit outside here. <laughs> That's my thing. That's what I love to do, work out outside. The beach is beautiful. Here, look at this, Playa Mahaka. Look at the little kid chilling in the water. People getting their you know, shots on their camera. You can see people surfing here as well. If surfing is your thing. It's probably a good spot for it. Got a nice photo by the beach and we're getting a leg workout, working our way back up. In Lima, you will get your steps in, okay? Mira Flores, it's safe, walkable neighborhood. I love it. Yeah, we just love getting exercise on vacation. We average about 10,000 steps a day, which was fantastic. And another fun fact here, one in four Peruvian self-identified indigenous. Yeah, Lima is also home to about 30 Michelin star restaurants at affordable prices, guys. We just didn't have enough time to take it all in. But we uh, hired a private taxi back to the airport. It was another 20 bucks. Um, it was about 35 minutes because there was some traffic. You want to get some cash here? Exchange some money, buy some solas when you can. Uh, it'll just save you some bucks. So we devoured those empanadas and made our way to the flight to Cusco. It was about an hour and a half long. We took Sky Airline, two round trip flights. One check suitcase was about 285. And here we are landing in Cusco. If you don't need to check the luggage, the tickets are like 40 bucks each, but the, the luggage you're paying for is super expensive. But here the taxi to Plaza de Armas near our hotel, Qatari, was about 12 bucks and took about 20 minutes. Dress warm, guys. Uh, it's about 60 degrees during the day and 30 at night. It gets pretty cold. So we booked this budget hotel, $40 a night, Hotel Guitari at Plaza de Armas. That's a central square. It was about seven and a half for our needs out of 10. Uh, breakfast was included. We took a doggy dip bag because we had an ATV excursion. Uh, we needed oxygen, guys. The altitude sickness is real. More on that later. They stored our luggage while we went to Machu Picchu and back, which was great. We just had to grab our luggage before going back to the airport. More on that logistics in the description. But yeah, this was the room. It was clean. We didn't need three beds. We just booked the cheapest one because we wanted to save some money. It's right in the square, so it was a little loud at night. But for us, we were too busy worrying about altitude sickness. I could barely sleep. I had shortness of breath. <laughs> I slept three hours. My wife got headaches and lightheaded. Um, just because of blood flow and that sort of thing. So if we could do it over again, if we weren't so limited for paid time off, we would probably do six days with uh, two or three days in Cusco instead of just one. But uh, yeah, now we're going to dinner. So we're getting dinner at about seven o'clock. We wanted to shut it down early to get up at 6 a.m. for the uh, ATV and grab the doggy bag and go. Now, don't believe what you read. There are no express kidnappings. Cusco is very safe, okay? So here we are going to dinner at Kushka restaurant. It was a 10 out of 10, 30 bucks for both of us, about 110 solas. 
um, to eat and drink, and I had some of the best beef I've ever had in my life. So we're just walking back to the hotel in the square and by this time, like every fourth breath, I'm gasping for air, having shortness of breath, my wife's having headaches. So we just shut it down. We went back to chill at the hotel for the night and then we got up early at 6 a.m. The hotel gave us a nice doggy bag with like crackers. I mean, it wasn't that great, but it was enough to keep us during the ATV tour. Now you can find Wilco Travel on TripAdvisor or Viator. It's 40 bucks per person, about six and a half hours, and you see different sites. It's a nine out of 10 experience for me. Um, I would say the only thing is they probably make too many stops for souvenirs, but it was perfect. They took us to the salt mines up a crazy hill with hairpin turns. It was, I thought we were gonna fall off, but it was a blast. They do have a strict inflexible cancellation policy. We have to pay twice for this tour just because uh, I'm by mistake on TripAdvisor, I booked the wrong date and they wouldn't let me reschedule for the next day. So we had to pay twice, but they gave us a little discount. I mean, look at these animals, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> So they do take you sightseeing during the ATV tour, guys. You gotta bring a little extra cash. I think it was about 70 solas or 35 per person. I can't remember. It's like 20 bucks. Um, bring some extra cash to access some of the sites for uh, the beautiful views. And I was actually pretty impressed by the tour guides, very knowledgeable, very professional and um, made sure that everything we did was very safe, especially on the ATVs. Someone actually had to turn back on this trip, but uh, it was great. We bought some souvenirs from here in Morai, um, some money bags for um, nieces and nephews, plenty of opportunities for souvenirs. They have this really cool um, smoky salt from the salt mines, as well as you can buy alpaca sweaters, as you'll see later on. You can buy so many different things, chocolates, um, organic chocolate. Did I say the food was amazing? About here, you're, you're seeing us on our way back, uh, almost being extorted by some locals. <laughs> I think they wanted some money because they saw us on the uh, tour. And this bus ride get, almost gave me a heart attack. Look at the hairpin turns. We're going way up into the mountain for the salt flats. And the drivers, they do it every day. And they drive so fast that like you feel like you're going to tip over. It's so scary.
This was a really cool presentation and opportunity to buy alpaca sweaters. They are pricey, so bring extra, extra cash if you really want to get something. Is this real skin? This is from the... This is the old... Oh no. This is the alpaca, no? This is the alpaca, no? This is the alpaca? Yes. Oh, this is from ship. It's real? Yeah, it's real. Wow. And this is the alpaca. I never take a shower. It's easy to launch. Pull them together. So we were actually on our way after the ATV tour to catch a train, but you got to catch a bus two hours to Olate Tambo first. The train station is two hours away by bus. And then you take the train to Machu Picchu or Aguas Calientes. Jonah's Casina Fusion Restaurant, you can find them on Instagram. It's a 10 out of 10, literally the best meal I've ever had in my life. Lamb, ribs, it's still sizzling on the plate. My wife said it was the best ravioli she's ever had. You won't be disappointed. Do book a meal at Jonah's. So this was by far the longest day of our trip. We flew in from Lima the day before. We had lack of sleep, altitude sickness, up early doing the ATV tour, and then catching a train to Aguas Calientes, but a two hour bus first, after riding the bus for about three hours um, for the ATV tour. What a day, but it was the best day ever. And here we are heading to Olante Tambo because we're going to Machu Picchu. It was a scenic two to two and a half hour drive to the train station. Um, someone actually on the bus had to stop for oxygen. It was crazy. But look at these views, guys. They stopped along the way here. This is Peru. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful landscape. Breathtaking. This camera does not do it justice. See the settlement in the valley? So including the bus transfer, the train tickets to Aguas Calientes from Olante Tambo, was $68 per person one way. Peru Rail is about 66. The bus took two hours, we had to wait an hour. Um, but yeah, while waiting, before boarding, they gave us some uh, live entertainment here before the two hour trip on the train. So five hour journey in total. And Peru Rail didn't do none of this entertainment stuff, okay? You just paid for your ticket and that's it, right? So if you're keeping score at home, Inca Rail is where it's at. So when planning your trip to Machu Picchu, be aware that trains may have a weight restriction for luggage. And that's why most people just bring backpacks because if your suitcase is above 20 pounds, you may not be able to board with it. As you see here, they check your ID as well. So the same ID that they ask you for online when booking your ticket, make sure to present it in person. It's 23, 24. And we're on our way to Aguas Calientes.
como yo. Y por ti mi vida hoy. Que mis latidos... En mí. All right, so here we are arriving to Aguascalientes, Machu Picchu. We're almost there. We'll be there the next day at 2 p.m. That's our entry time. And we're just walking through the town here. It's a short five minute walk to Runa's Inn, which is where we uh, stayed at another budget hotel for the night. And it may be dark, but no safety issues in Aguascalientes either. But of course, always be vigilant and aware of your surroundings. So to my left, you're seeing train tracks that run through the town, um, Peru rail tracks and shipping containers seem to be dropped off at nighttime, so you will not sleep. And of course on Booking.com, they don't exactly tell you that. It's just when you get there, they need the earplugs, like a bedside. So for 30 bucks, it did the job. I didn't have an image of the room here, but again, it was like a dorm. It was really small, but it got the job done. The breakfast was delicious. As you can see here, you have a nice view of the scenery. Um, but again, it's located next to the train station and the trains were running from like, oh, we got there at maybe 10 o'clock and it was running until about 1 a.m. So it was really hard to shut it down and sleep, but uh, we got up and we were fine. We got about six hours. We also had to check out pretty early, but they held our luggage for us. And we're going to Mach Picchu, y'all, day four, and then we'll head back on the train. Imagine hearing that locomotive at 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. in the morning. So that was probably the one blip on our trip from a planning perspective. So just book a different hotel, pay a little bit more. Pay more than the 30 bucks we did at Runa's Inn. Um, the breakfast did make up for it, but yeah, just pay a little bit more to get a good night's sleep. So here we had a 2 p.m. entry time, and so we had about four or five hours until that entry time. But as you can see here, uh, the bus tickets from August Calientes and Machu Picchu are $24 per person, 12 up, 12 down. You get it together. So book it together online with your Machu Picchu entry tickets and go to the bus stop one hour early, bring your ID, and you have to show the printed copy of the bus ticket so they scan on the QR code. I think sometimes they allow it from your phone, but bring the printed the copy just in case. As you can see here, there are hordes of people lining up. Um, for their bus right the to get up to Machu Picchu. The bus is only like 25 minutes, but so um, you want to get there early to make sure you get a spot. And so for us, our train with Peru Rail was 4.30. They didn't allow us to change it. And so from 2 p.m. to 4.30, that's kind of cutting it close. So what we did was, after getting some food before going up, we went up early. We went up at 11, and we actually entered around 12. And so we had plenty of time coming back down. Now, they don't usually allow you to enter early, but we explained to them that, hey, we're in a time crunch, we got a flight to catch. We showed them the flight at 10.30 at night. For the entry, we're going to an earlier entry. Yeah, so we were pretty lucky and they were pretty understanding of our situation. We got off this scary, crazy bus ride, and um, you gotta buy your entry tickets in advance. Like I said at the beginning, they're about 40 bucks, and they allow you in there for about four hours. There's no re-entry. Here we are talking to a tour guide. You do not need a tour guide, guys. Just get a map and go in and turn left. Follow route one or two, and you'll be fine. Here it is. No, for real, everybody with a tour guide looked absolutely bored, okay? It's an extra 10 bucks for a group and I think uh, 50 to 60 private, and even more if they speak English. 
and it's raining guys like we got there and it's raining we didn't even bring a coat but we did not care it's totally warm it's like 20 degrees celsius i'm not sure what i think that's like 70 degrees 65 70 but yeah it was beautiful it was a great day we got soaked we did not care we were just so happy to be there And keep in mind there are no bathrooms and no re-entry, so make sure you use the bathroom before you go. Do bring a raincoat and some good shoes, okay, guys? Um, it gets pretty slippery when wet, especially if you go in rainy season. We went in November, so if you go in the summertime, it's probably different. But yeah, we were just so happy that the fog didn't cover up the view. Didn't need no tour guide. We just saved how much money? Fifty dollars, forty dollars, whatever. Um. Hey y'all, plan a trip for your wife, all right? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times she said thank you on this trip. Like every, she was tired, she didn't, she was hungry, she didn't care. She was just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. This is like, she couldn't believe she was there. So uh, we made memories, it was a trip of a lifetime. It was very condensed, um, four really action-packed days, but you can do it guys, you can do it on your own. Um, we spent about a thousand per person, a little less than that, but it really depends on the flight in. Um, that was the biggest expense, of course. But yeah, I mean, look how beauty, beautiful it is. Like, it was great. Then the bus dropped us down here back into town. We got some food real quick with a view, and um, we caught the train uh, to head back to Olatitambo. And then we caught the two hour bus into town at the nick of time. We arrived at 8.30. Um, but yeah, the Peru Rail train, 66 bucks. It's very scenic, very beautiful. Again, we went in at nighttime and on the way back, it was daytime. So we got to see the view. We got the Voyager, which is like the um, kind of 360 view. We paid a little bit more for that. It was beautiful. It was well worth it. Another tip here, eat before you board the train, guys, because it's a five hour journey back and um, we didn't even get a bathroom break. We, like, we couldn't even if we wanted to because we had to catch the flight. So though we were successful in um, bumping up our entry time from 2 o'clock to 12, uh, we couldn't change our, our train time. They wouldn't allow it within 24 hours. But it all worked out. Uh, as you can see here, we got back to the station by 6.05. We ended up back in Cusco by about 8.30, and then we had to rush to the airport. We made it at about 9.15, just before the check-in counter closed. It was a close call, but we made it onto that flight back to Lima. And of course, even if you have limited paid time off at the end of the year, I do not recommend <laughs> booking it the way I did. We were very lucky. As you can see here, we're running to the taxi because we had to st stop at the station after the bus. We had to go back to Qatari, our hotel, to grab our luggage and then hurry back to the airport. And we did that in 35 minutes. And we're so relieved here at the counter. <laughs> So we had a safe flight and then we checked in at the Wyndham right next to the airport uh, after midnight. We slept three hours, got up at 4 a.m. for breakfast at Wyndham and um, Continental, uh, not the greatest breakfast, but it was included. Uh, we paid a lot, 150 bucks for the location really, so we didn't have to take a taxi. And then we boarded our flight to Bogota and back home to Toronto and we were so happy and thankful that everything worked out. As you can see here, we're on Avianca. I'm flying Baby Girl Premium on the way home because we were tired. And as we fly over Bogota and look back on Machu Picchu, here is a breakdown of everything we spent on this trip, guys. It was well worth it. Spend the money, make a memory of a lifetime, and live your best life. Good luck. God bless you. Thank you for watching and get money remotely. Check out some of my job videos and other travel vlogs. Please like, share, and subscribe if this video was helpful to you at all. This is Ryan. Have a good day.